Well, that's that. No going back now. But if you could, if you could go back to a specific moment in your life and erase it from your memory, when would it be? High school, 2005. It was a Friday afternoon and we'd just been dismissed from yet another dull musical composition class, courtesy of Mr. Portman, otherwise known as Mr. Porkman, on account of his waistline and multiple chins. He had a lack of charisma and his teaching methods were somewhat uninspiring, but despite that I liked music and often spent my Friday afternoons in the studio with all the equipment. For that reason, I think Mr. Portman took a shine to me even said he'd help me record some demos. But this particular Friday, he had to leave early. He told me that uh, he'd spoken to the janitor, left the keys with me, and, and so I stayed in the sound booth uh, mixing my tracks. The next thing I knew, I felt a sharp pain and I was knocked to the floor. A group of my classmates had crept back in, knocked me on the back of the head, thrown me into the sound booth and locked the door. The leader of the, of the pack, he leaned across the mixing desk and pressed a few buttons. This horrible, piercing, whining sound filled the booth. He turned the volume right up as, as loud as it could go. And then he, he shut the light off and then they left. He must have told the janitor I'd gone home because I was locked in there the whole weekend. My mom thought I'd stayed over to friends. She got worried when I didn't come home on Sunday, so she called the cops. The cleaners found me, 5 a.m. on Monday, curled up in the corner, clutching my ears. I can still hear the, the ringing sound now. That, that was the worst time. That, that broke me. But the first time, the first time it happened was a few years before, in the locker room, after athletics. The same group of guys, led by the same fucking asshole, were going around pulling down the shorts of the weak and vulnerable. It was only the first few days of the first semester, so that they were just testing out the flock, shall we say. And when they got to me, I, I couldn't defend myself, so down they went for all to see. The look of satisfaction in his eyes when everyone laughed was well it was evident that this would be the start of his prolific rise in popularity and my downfall who was responsible for this steven anderson steve fucking anderson tall blonde smart threateningly handsome Captain of every sports team, head of every faculty, always had the most beautiful girl attached to his arm. You know the one I mean. It's almost laughable, isn't it? The stereotypical, perfect American male, the guy that everybody loved or would love to be. And for that reason, I think Steve and all his buddies got away with it. Everyone turned a blind eye, even the teachers. But Steve was an asshole of the highest caliber. I was just the only one that seemed to know it. He lived his whole life tricking everybody into believing he was this perfect human. Isn't it amazing how easily people can be fooled? In my last year of high school, I met Jessica. She was my savior. She helped me gain my confidence, became my armor at times, and <laughs> oh, how Steve hated that. He hated that because he loved her too, but she was the one thing I had over him. I got the girl. And as high school came to an end, so too did the bullying. Steve got bored and I got into college and never saw him again. Jessica and I, we stayed together through college. Ended up renting a place together, not far out of town. And then both of us, years later, were doing well in our jobs, 
we were able to buy that place. Happy times there, I gotta say. And then sometime in the fall, I remember she came to me and told me that she just bought two tickets for the high school reunion. <laughs> Why the fuck would I want to go back there? I told her the only person in my life that I wanted to see from that time was... sat right in front of me. But she told me to at least think about it, that she wanted to see old friends. She told me that she was the happiest she'd ever been and that going there with me would be the... Well, it'd show everyone just how far we'd come. How we'd won, especially if Steve was there. And then I imagined the look on his face if I was to turn up with her by my side and... So, I agreed. And sure enough, there he was. Stood amongst his cronies, all of whom time had not been kind to. And then he looked at me, and I looked straight back. Jessica squeezed my hand and led me off in a, in a different direction. We, we spent the whole evening avoiding each other. And then I felt this tap on my shoulder. <laughs> Mr. Portman? <laughs> You're still alive, I thought to myself. Jeez. Someone came down to make the most of the free dessert buffet. <laughs> oh, it was nice to see him. And I told him how my music career had never taken off, but that I'd found happiness elsewhere in my life. And then I looked around the room in search for that beautiful reason for my happiness. And to my gut-wrenching surprise, there she was in the corner, talking to Steve. He took her hand and tried to kiss it. She moved it away swiftly and left his side. And then he looked at me, raised his glass and smiled. I smiled right back. And then Jessica approached me. She said she was done. And so I bid farewell to Mr. Portman and we left the building hand in hand. <coughs> and two months later, I proposed. We picked a date in the summer. I couldn't wait. And then a few weeks after that, <coughs> I was prepping some food in the kitchen and her phone vibrated. Instinctively, I looked and the message read, here's to us and our dirty little secret. <coughs> I remained calm. I didn't raise my voice or throw anything across the room. You see that the kind of work I do actually requires me to contain my emotions. And with everything that I've been through my whole life, I've become somewhat of an expert at maintaining my feelings. Years of bullying has forced me to join various self-defense classes, mixed martial arts, boxing, <laughs> and it helped. It was a release and it calmed me. And you know, I, I was actually pretty good. I even competed one time at state level, but came second to some Russian motherfucker. And then I got into security and then private security. And then I joined this contract removal unit. I was a hired gun, a hitman. It was infrequent work, but very highly paid. No qual qualifications necessary, just a, a cool head and a cold heart. And the ability to, to hide. To, um, to become a different person, to blend into the environment, to get the job done wherever necessary. I'd spent my whole life growing up as a ghost. It seemed like an awful wasted opportunity not to get paid for it. But last year, I put an end to it. Years of removing assholes from the world have come to an end. There's just two more I need to get rid of. One more. <coughs> and the text messages, they didn't stop. They got more intimate. She even changed the sender's name from Steve to her friend's name Gemma just to cover her tracks if ever I saw her phone. But I was up all night while she slept reading her messages anyway. I saw the photographs, the filthy detailed essays they'd send each other, the same kind of shit she would send to me. I would just lay there praying it was one big nightmare, just a fucking joke. I wanted to end it all, forever. I mean, I, I could, I, I could 
snap Steve in half with my pinky if I wanted to, make it look like an accident and get away with it like so many before me. But do I really want to live the rest of my life with this pain? This aching in my heart, ringing in my ears. I mean, he's the one that needs to suffer for all the misery he caused me, for taking away the one person in my life that I cared about, the one person worth living for. And now look at her. He's the one that did this. He's responsible, and now he's gonna fucking pay. <coughs> so here's how it's gonna be. This morning, I left our house, and I took Jessica's phone, and I came straight here. This is their little fucking place, right next to where Steve works. <coughs> An hour ago, four o'clock, I text Steve using Jessica's phone. Steve, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I still love him. Please, come over to our place at 5.30. We need to talk. Don't get mad like last time. <laughs> that was no last time. He didn't get mad. I'm just planting more evidence. Five o'clock, 30 minutes ago. The same time, the same place. She's been coming for the last three months. <coughs> I, I followed her and tracked a routine. I knew she'd be here, but she didn't know I'd be here. And before she could come up with some bullshit excuse, I wrapped my hands around her neck and squeezed until her face turned white and her black fucking heart stopped beating. Any minute now, Steve's gonna come through that door and he's gonna see her dead body on that couch. No DNA or, or prints of mine on her, no, I rubbed them straight off. But he's no doubt gonna rub his prints all over her in one final pathetic effort to resuscitate her bad move, Steve. And then he's going to see me, <coughs> finally at peace on his kitchen floor. He'll know I did all this. <laughs> but what he won't know is that flowing through my body is a small quantity of poison. Small enough to conceal in a glass of wine, but strong enough to cut off the air supply to my lungs, causing me to choke to death in just over 30 minutes. <coughs> that same poison sits upstairs in his bathroom cabinet. But he won't know to look there before the cops get here. How are the cops going to get here? Please. Oh my god, thank you. Police. Ambulance. Yeah, my name's Richard White. I'm with my fiance, Jessica. I'm at a friend's house. His name's Steven Anderson. Everything was fine. Listen. We were just talking and drinking, and then all of a sudden, he went mad. He started shouting, and then he started strangling Jessica. I'm, I ran upstairs. I'm so scared. I've locked myself in a bathroom. That's where I am now. Please, just just send anybody as fast as you can. I I, I got to go down there now and stop him. I, I can't hear them. Please, just just come here quick. And now we wait. <coughs> and Steve's gonna live the rest of his life in a cell, knowing that I got one up on him. <coughs> that I won. <coughs> he couldn't have my girl. <coughs>